Aproveitando o break do seu podcast pra perguntar. Será que você sabe... Quem é ele? Esse tá de rock and roll. Trident apresenta um feat de gerações com Rita Lee e Luísa Sonza. Eu procuro estar por dentro, doutor, dessa nova geração. Mas minha filha não me leva a sério, doutor. Ela fica cheia de mistério com esse tal de rock and roll. Quando terminar seu podcast, já aproveita pra ouvir esse feat aqui no Spotify. Trident no Rock in Rio 40 anos. Masca e destrava seu rock and roll. It's time for Thriller Thursdays, here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The Hawk Chronicles follow the adventures of Detective Kate Hawk, who went from a Baltimore police detective to intergalactic investigator, from fighting crime on the streets to crime in the stars. And now, episode 206, The Chase is On. Fall back, take cover. Did anyone see anything? One shooter wearing all black using a handgun. I'd say a conventional pistol, medium caliber. I can't believe that someone on this planet would still be using ancient gunpowder-based weapons. Who are you and what do you want? Be careful, Jaffra. These old weapons don't have a stun setting. Do you think he's rage? Let's find out. Whoever you are, cease fire. We are deputized agents of the Intergalactic Defense Force. Throw down your weapons and show yourself. Grenade! Take cover! Just a smoke grenade. He's making a run for it. Gabby, get back here. I got this. Gabby. <coughs> Everyone, back. What's wrong with her? Does she have a death wish? Don't worry about her. She can handle herself. Don't you remember back on Death River, she slipped overboard in those dark, monster-infested waters? Yeah, she was crazy then. She's crazy now. Stop! Or I'll shoot! I said I'll shoot, not you! I warned you! Gabby, are you all right? One male suspect, dressed in a black jumpsuit. I hit him in the leg. A helicopter just landed on the roof. We heard it. Make your way back. A break, break. Jomak, we've engaged hostiles. They are escaping by a rotary winged aircraft. Return to the ship and prepare for launch. Will do. I'll contact New Market Tower and see if we can get a track on this aircraft. Joffre, I can get the ship fired up and land at the old hospital airfield before you'd ever get back here. Sounds good. Uh, drop the ramp right away and we'll drive into the cargo bay. Roger that. They're headed towards Cali. I'll climb down the access ladder and meet you on the old ramp. We're on our way. You think this plan will work? I don't see why not. Anton will tell Dimitri that he was not in the car, but unfortunately one of their men was driving us. Thus, the four bodies. I'm glad you have an international driver's license. I'm not sure who to trust these days. What about all of this talk that Dimitri would suspect Anton if he came to him alive? He'll convince Dimitri that he believed the attack was random and it was fortunate for him that he wasn't in the car. He can also tell them that they don't have to worry about sending us off to some gulag in Siberia. All of their problems have been solved. It sounds like a good plan, but we're dealing with an experienced spy here. Fortunately, we're dealing with two experienced spies. I have all the confidence in the world that Anton will succeed. I'm about to go into the embassy. How do you read me? Loud and clear. We'll be monitoring. Okay, here we go. I see him. Anton, what happens? Agent Doug, glad to see that you are all right. I'm afraid Agent Simon, Agent Hawk, and our prisoner Jameson were hit in that rocket attack. I heard. Uh, who was the fourth person? One of the embassy divers. Ivan, I think. I see. Why weren't you with our prisoners? Ivan insisted on transporting them. I followed in another car. It was a little too crowded for me. Step into my office. So, what really happened? Uh, there is an expression that the Americans use. 
don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Uh, there is a war going on after all. No need to take risks. Unfortunately for Ivan, my cautious move didn't work out well for him. Obviously it didn't. At least that takes care of what to do with our three problems. Yes, a most fortunate turn of events. It was as if a precise airstrike was called in. Uh-oh, what's he doing? Just what do you mean by that, Anton? Exactly what I said. It's as if someone wanted to wipe out everyone in that car. Are you pointing your finger at me, Anton? I hope he knows what he's doing. Of course not, Dimitri. I suspect it's our handlers. You never know what Moscow is up to. Uh, yes, <laughs> he knows what he's doing. They were with me in the house, waiting for you to show with our guests. I don't recall anyone setting up a drone strike. They set up the meeting and they knew we were coming. I'm sure a spy told them when we left and had a spotter to guide the drone. I actually believe that. Ah, Kiev is a big city. Oh, of the millions of people and all of the traffic, what are the odds that the only target hit was them? I see your point. Well, it was quite fortunate for you that you weren't in the vehicle. Yes, very fortunate. So where do we go from here? I will inform our superiors that the problem has been resolved. We will be able to concentrate our efforts on the next MI6 spy they recruit. When am I going to meet these superiors you talk about? For the time being, their request to remain in the shadows. Go back to the apartment you were using and make sure it's clean. I'm returning to the meeting house and inform our handlers of the situation. Very well. I'll contact you when we've finished. Follow me when I leave. I'm going to track Dimitri to the meeting. Well, that was very interesting. He seemed to buy that. Yes, Anton did a good job of convincing him. If we can get Dimitri and his handlers, that would be quite a coup. To tell you the truth, getting Dimitri would be all the satisfaction I need. I can understand that. I feel the same about getting both Wi-Fi and Lister after my injury. But be patient. We need to get, as Anton said, the head of the Viper, not just the tail. I understand what you're saying, Agent Hawk, but... I'm concerned he might slip through the cracks and we never see him again. As long as he trusts Anton, I don't think we'll have anything to worry about. Here comes Anton now. Dimitri shouldn't be too far behind. I am going to head in the direction of the safe house. Stay where you are. When he leaves, I'll pull around and you can follow. We copy. We're ready to follow. I hope his handlers are all there. Even if they aren't, we'll get enough of their leadership to hurt their operation. It's a never-ending cycle, Kate. As soon as you shut down one operation, another one pops up behind it. You'd think that after a while they would run out of spies. There are always eager young agents wanting to get into the field. There goes Anton. Let's hope he can pull this off. Special Investigations Section, Officer Nelson. Hey, rookie! Jim Barnes, what great adventure are you on now? I'm working the case that Kate got started. The Army Officer, uh, what is his name, Korsky? Yeah, that's the case. We hit a dead end, more or less. So you calling the Baltimore PD for help, or the, or the IDF? Well, both, actually. I need your resources at the department to run a background check on this guy. We tried it, but we hit a dead end prior to 92. I'm sending you everything we have on him. I'll get Hernandez on it. He's been wanting to get involved in something like this. Yeah, he came by to see me before I took off to D.C. That covers the department. Now, how about the IDF? How can they help you? Well, you can thank Sam for this one. Oh, boy. Here we go. There's nothing prior to 92, as I said. We can't find anything driver's license, birth records, or even a high school diploma. Kelly even checked the yearbook for his high school. He's not listed. I think maybe he was adopted, or his high school records were destroyed, or... Wait, you said, thanks, Sam. Let me guess. He thinks Korsky is an alien, and not the undocumented kind. Well, that would be it exactly. It's really our 
there, but I'm sitting here working this case with two aliens, so it's not beyond the realm of possibility. That's true, but if Korsky was an alien, what's the end game, and who sent him? Well, Mr. IDF Hotshot, that's why I called you. We need to get all the available resources on this case. Raids is the only outfit I can think of that would ever want an alien spy at the Pentagon. By the way, how are Sam and Lenora working out? Well, no complaints from me. Lenora's pretty good at research, and Sam, well, he surprises me once in a while. He may talk mostly about food, but he's good at following directions and overall work ethics. That's good to hear. Is Detective Garrett pleased with your team? I think so. He's pretty hard-charging, so everyone gets along. We're not much for just sitting around waiting for something to happen. Well, that's good. I'll get Hernandez on the background check, and I'll work on the IDF side. This guy has a pass somewhere. Yeah, he does. We're in and secure. Ramp up. Ramp coming up. Make sure you're clear. Clear. Ramp light green. Newmarket Tower. This is Freighter Mercury. Do you have any information on that aircraft leaving the old hospital? Uh, negative on that, Mercury. That aircraft's not registered. We'd like to have a talk with them, but we've broken about every air reg we have. Be advised, we consider them hostile. They just fired upon some of the crew members at the hospital. Copy that, Mercury. We'll put out a notum to consider them hostile. Roger that. We'll be departing very shortly to follow. Notify us when you're airborne. Mercury Wilco. <laughs> Gabby, she's all warmed up and ready to fly. She? I mean, it's already. Tom, just messing with you. What's our clearance? Just call tower when you're ready. We have clearance to pursue. Engine temps nominal. All gauges in the green. Standing by for your command, Captain. We are now in a tactical situation. Jafra, you have the con. Joe Mac, head up to the cupola. Since this is a hostile ship, we can take it down if it refuses to yield. I'm on it. Georgia, what is the last bearing for the ship that departed Newmarket Hospital? Current bearing is 080 zero zero degrees. I can give you an intercept bearing once we are airborne. Thank you. Gabby, taxi to the active. Marco, man navigation. On it. I'm plotting a departure heading request for tower. Sam, monitor engineering. Roger that. All instruments are in the green. I am quite capable of performing all of these functions flawlessly. That's okay, Georgia. This is a good training. Please monitor and advise upon request, or if a dangerous situation arises. Very well. I will monitor. I'm in position and secured for takeoff. Roger that. Gabby, call for departure clearance. Tower, Mercury ready for departure. Requesting departure of 080 and climb to 1000. Mercury, you are cleared as requested. Good hunting. Roger that. Mercury on the active and rolling. I recommend a course heading of 300. Zero, zero. to 300 and climbing to 1000. All systems in the green, hull integrity 100%. Radar contact, aircraft speed is 200, altitude 500. Current heading is 270. Ahead one third, we should catch him very quickly. Aye, ahead one third. Closing rate sets intercept at less than two standard minutes. Joe Mac, let me know when you have a visual. Will do. What's his altitude? 500. Roger that. Georgia, please scan all frequencies and try to contact them. I am scanning all frequencies. What do you plan to do when you catch up to them? I'm hoping we can make radio contact and I can talk some sense into them. <laughs> Good luck with that. I doubt they'll respond. I've got visual on the helicopter. Uh, copy that. The aircraft is not emitting any RF. Contact will not be possible. Do you think that there's a possibility that they're leading us away? That thought had crossed my mind. We'll just have to take a chance. These people fired at us in the hospital. Perfect way to get you to chase them. I agree with Jafra. We know the ship is carrying hostiles. We just can't stay back because we suspect they might be a decoy. Yeah, I agree. No one can get off this planet very easily. 
Since they stole the Canberra in the beginning, there's a good chance they don't have access to a deep space vessel. Recommend we drop to altitude and let them know we're here. Take us to 500 and maintain visual contact and match their speed. Leaving 1,000 for 500, dropping speed to 200. Looks like he's making a run for a deep, narrow canyon. If he makes it, I don't think we can follow. Charge the cannon. Once you see an open field below him, hit him with a pulse. Roger that. I'm willing to bet that Wi-Fi isn't on that chopper. I don't think he can be moved based on what I saw in that operation room. I agree. I don't expect to find him either. But someone shot at us in that hospital for a reason. They must know something. Do you think they'll run? I know one of them won't be running. I got him in the leg before he got on the chopper. He's going to need medical attention. The chopper's making a run for it. If there is a spot where he can safely auto-rotate, take him out. Done. It doesn't look like we're headed in the same direction as yesterday, from what I can remember. From what you can remember. And that still worries me, Kate. You know that you were out cold momentarily, right? Yes, I know. It's like having a dream and then waking up and you're not sure where you are. But it didn't take long to realize I was still in Kiev. But you were right about our direction. We're going away from the original meeting place. That's not surprising. I'm sure they move their meeting places constantly. I just hope it's somewhere that's easily accessible. I'm glad Anton arranged to have some of his people in reserve. As much as I'd like for us to be in on the takedown, we need to err on the side of caution. Agent Simon, do you copy? Yes, Anton. Go ahead. I just contacted Dimitri and told him that I have cleared the safe house as he asked. Do you seem okay with that? Yes. In fact, he gave me the new location of the meeting house. He said it's time I meet our superiors. My gut tells me that's not a good idea. First, he tried to kill you. We're both sure of that. Second, he told you that your superiors wanted to remain in the shadows. Why would they want to meet you now? I am in total agreement with you. It smells like a trap to me also. I will proceed with caution. I have two fellow SPU officers with me. They will be stationed right outside the door, monitoring me. Will we be able to monitor also? Yes. I will leave my microphone open. Once the situation is under control, I will invite you to join me. Excellent. We will park close by. We are getting close. Hopefully we can soon bring Dimitri's career to an end. We will be standing by. I think he's making a big mistake. That drone attack was meant for all of us. I agree. Dimitri knew that Anza would be in the car with us. At least that's what he thought. And like you said, why would he change his mind about letting Anton meet his handlers? Anton has worked with Dimitri for quite a while. I'm sure he knows the risks. At least he will have backup with him. I hate to ask this, Agent Simon, but it would be helpful to me. I suspect you're going to ask, how could you work with Agent Doug for so many years and not suspect him? Am I close? I'm sorry if that's too personal, but anything I could learn from you would be appreciated. I understand. Jameson, you might learn something too. In this business, your life may well depend on the person with whom you're working. There has to be a certain level of trust. I had known Dale for several years. We worked on a couple of missions together. I found him to be reliable and trustworthy, but in hindsight, I really only knew Agent Doug, not Dale. Sir, are you saying that you knew him on a professional level, but not on a personal level? Yes. Please understand. I'm not saying agents need to be best friends, but you need to know something about their personality, their habits, etc. I see what you're saying. If you knew more about him, you might have been able to pick up on some changes in habit. Yes, he passed himself as a Scot but I never question him about his home. No matter how deep you immerse yourself into an undercover assignment, you'll eventually be tripped up. Like not knowing anything about your region's football club or a popular pub. I can see how working with someone for years would make you less likely to question their actions. Exactly. Had I questioned him more, I may have put two and two together. He was involved in all those missing persons cases I should have seen it. That would have been pretty hard to do, sir. But look at my situation. You knew a lot about me and that convinced you that I wasn't a double agent. 
I suppose so. Well, I suppose when we get back to London, you and I should uh, hit up a couple of my favourite pubs and get to know each other. Certainly. Then we'll play a rousing game of cribbage, followed by a round-the-clock dart tournament. So, what did Nelson have to say? Uh, we're going to approach this from two different fronts. One of the detectives, Hernandez, is going to investigate Korski. He'll do a thorough background check and report back to me. Well, that's good. He did come by the office and volunteer his services. Okay, that's one front. What's the other? Well, Nelson's going to work with Pierman and run the DNA against the IDF's database. That's an enormous database. It will take forever. It is, but I can tell you that they have the ability to break down the workload by planets based on genetic similarities. Well, I'm sure at some point he's had medical work done, so you can rule out Hongans. Our DNA is not structured the same as yours. I'm not sure Hernandez will be able to find out anything more than Lenora and I found. Which is a whole lot of nothing. Something happened in 92. He came from somewhere, which means someone, whoever he was, disappeared. You're right. If he was someone else prior to 1992, that person is now missing. Or moved, but without knowing anything about his past, we have nowhere to start. People disappear every day. You're right. Unless we can find something that identifies his origin, we're spinning our wheels. I think our best bet right now is for Mr. Pierman to come through with helpful DNA results. Well, I know something that would be helpful. Yeah, what's that, Sam? An all-you-can-eat buffet! What's the status on the chopper? They managed to auto-rotate safely into an opening in the forest. I don't see any activity outside the ship. Gabby, how close to them can you land? The vegetation's pretty heavy. I don't think I can get closer than a standard mile. Georgia, do you have a landing site? I agree with your assessment. Land at grid sector 5-32. That affords you the best landing site. Marco, plot that sector and vector me to the site. Copy that. Stand by. Turn to heading 030 for one standard mile. 030. Joe Mac, I want you to remain in place and provide us with a perimeter defense. Copy that. Don't worry, I've got us covered. You do understand that doesn't mean if it moves, shoot it. Aw, oh, Captain Nate, you're such a spoil sport. Oh, don't worry, I'm not that trigger happy. Arriving at coordinates. I have a landing area in sight. Now, Tom, Gabby, and I will investigate the chopper. The rest of you stand by. Alright. You're bleeding pretty bad. Oh, my leg. My leg. Oh. We're gonna have to carry you. I hear quads. We gotta get out of here. Come, hurry, hurry. Is it ready? Yeah, everything's ready. Good. Let's go. Let's go. Uh. Come on, let's go. Hurry. Oh, oh,
not seeing anybody. The chopper looks to be in good condition. Oh, they could have taken off through the jungle. Well, if they did, one of them is moving slowly with a leg wound. Ready your weapons and move out slowly. I'm not seeing anyone. Neither do I, but it looks like they left some equipment in the chopper. That's not equipment. Take cover! Was anyone left in the chopper and where did the rest go? Will Nelson or Hernandez be able to shed any light on Korsky? And will Anton survive his meeting with Dimitri? Find out in the next episode of The Hawk Chronicles, Jungle Fever. <laughs>